You know me as the host of the Too Busy to Eat show, but I'm also founder and CEO of Too Busy to Eat, the protein bar company. I make what I feel is the healthiest and best tasting protein bar on the market. So now that came from, it developed from my own frustration of not being able to find a bar that, I, that tasted good and that was extremely healthy that I could have maybe multiple times a day if I was really busy or I could feed my kids and not feel guilty about what they ate. So I created this bar with grass-fed whey protein, no more than three grams of sugar, which is all naturally occurring, and it's gluten-free, non-GMO, the list goes on. So don't take my word for it, I want you to try them. And I want to give you incentive, incentive to try them. So I'm going to give you 20% off your first order. You can get a sample bag of bars or you can get a whole box, whatever you want. Go to my website, toobusytoeat.com. Not hard to remember. Show the company. And enter the promo code TBTE Show. TBTE Show. In the, actually, it's a discount box when you check out and you'll get 20% off your first order, no matter how small or large. So, Go to the website now, try them out, and then let me know what you think. Welcome to the Too Busy to Eat show. Man, today we have Ben Greenfield on the show. I'm excited, and I hope you are too. Ben is amazing. He's got so many credentials, I don't even know where to start. But I will say that he's written a best, New York Times bestselling book called Beyond Training. He, in 2008, he was the NS. No, yeah, NSCA Trainer of the Year, Personal Trainer of the Year, 2013 and 14. He was ranked the, one of the top 100 most influential people in health and fitness. I mean, that, those are amazing credentials. He's got three amazing podcasts. Uh, the Get Fit Guy, Ben Greenfield Fitness Show, and The Obstacle Dominator. Uh, you can learn so much from Ben. What struck me the most about Ben is that he is fine-tuning the human body uh, beyond what I've ever tried or uh, known about, and he's taking the human body to another level. And so without wasting any more time, let's get to the show. Uh, hey, Ben, thank you so much for being on the show. Um, we, this is going to be great. We had a little warm up. I had a little technical glitch. So, um, you know, now we're ready to rock. We've got all the things. Uh, I'm glad yeah, it's, all, it's always, always fun to, to, to uh, have a little chat that, that wasn't actually recorded, but it's all good. Makes it makes it that much better the next time around. Right. So, yeah. So as we were talking, you, you, um, you fascinating. You've gone through and had a lot of awards. You've had a lot of, um, you made a lot of impact in the nutrition, fitness, health world. And what we were just talking about, um, which I want to dive into again, is you're not just, you know, you've kind of moved beyond. Like we talked about, you know, people, you know, you're not teaching people to, to squat. People know how to squat correctly. People know how to do this. Now, and people should know how to do nutrition and movement. Now you are tweaking yourself beyond that. Now you're, you're fine tuning the human body. So could you explain a little bit more about how you are doing that? with light and water and what we talked about yeah um earlier when we were when we were talking uh but before, <laughs> before before we actually recorded um i was talking about yeah like like you talk about right like learning the biomechanics of the squat or learning how to eat properly learning how to how to put nutrients into your body that you know like your great grandparents would have recognized you know, or, or knowing that you shouldn't have your ass planted in a chair for eight hours a day. Like a lot of that stuff isn't rocket science. Right, right. Right? A lot of people are able to grasp that and they're able to do it. But then you get into all the issues that we face kind of like living in a post-industrial era, right? Where there, there's mold and fungi and break right. dust in, in the air. And like, they just had a study like two weeks ago showing that air pollution can cause the formation of amyloid plaques and, and, and a lot of the precursors for things like Alzheimer's disease. And you know, that, that's, that's one of those situations where you can't out squat your way or, or out <laughs> kale smoothies your way from air pollution. Um, you look at like electricity, right? Apple watches and all the Wi-Fi that bounces around the inside of the airplane that you're on as people whip out their cell phones before the plane even lands, you know, the, the Bluetooth appliances that are all over the place, you know, including your, your, your motor vehicles. And that's another thing that, that can be difficult 
um, to escape. But you could you could do it, but it's, it's difficult. Lighting, right? Like modern lighting, LED lighting, fluorescent lighting in malls and grocery stores. I mean, um, some of it has been shown to you know as, as odd or as humorous as this may seem to some people. Thinking about that, light could actually do this. It's it's carcinogenic. It affects your circadian oh. biology, your circadian rhythms. It disrupts sleep. It can cause brain fog. And then, you know, water is another biggie, right? For everything from like fertilizer runoff to herbicides and pesticides and you know, all the things that we, we tend to find in municipal water or, you know, water fountains and, and a lot of our, our, even like our plastic bottled waters. And, and you, can, you can mitigate these issues, right? So like I have a HEPA air filter installed in my house. I travel with like an essential oil diffuser that helps to clean the air and like this little portable humidifier that I can use in, in a hotel room. Right. I for for electricity, right? Like I hardwire my computer to the router via an Ethernet cable rather than using the Wi-Fi router. And I really don't use like self-quantification devices, right? Like tracking devices that always have a Bluetooth signal turned on. And I'm and I'm careful in terms of like the amount of electricity I expose myself to. You know, even my phone, I I put it in a special little case and I have like special I, have a, I use a, a headset called an air tube headset where sound travels in tubes rather than, than wires up to, up to my ears. So I'm not getting exposed to lots of, you know, dirty electricity from things like, like, uh, phones, you know, with, with light, again, it's not rocket science when, when you're out and you're like under fluorescent light and led light and all these crazy lighting situations, you just wear, you know, like anti glare glasses, like blue light blocking glasses. And then at your home, you expose yourself to lots of natural light, like, red light and you know near infrared and far infrared and you can get devices that produce these type of lights and uva and uvb from sunlight and um you know and, and then in the evening you want to get the absence of light right like right, you get right. a lot of like red light bulbs or you know firelight or torches or, or candles there's all sorts of ways that you can light your home aside from like modern mm -hmm. sure. fluorescent lighting and you know in addition to to, to the air and the light and the electricity you know, water, right? Like I, I travel with this little portable water bottle with just like, you know, it's like a Berkey water filter on the water bottle. So I can drink, you know, whatever out of the airport water fountain and just have good clean water. And when I get to where I'm going, you know, I'll swing in the grocery store and buy myself a bunch of like glass bottled water, you know, Pellegrino or, or Perrier. And, you know, I have a right. water filter at, at home. And so it's, it's not like you can't make the right choices, but, but yeah, I mean, the long answer to your question um, I, that, that I just gave is, is just basically summed up in the fact that you have to pay attention to the invisible visible variables, variables that a lot of people ignore. Um, in addition to, you know, get going after the, the big things, right? Like moving more and eating healthy. So that's, yeah, it, it, that, that's what it takes in my opinion to kind of truly optimize the body. So you're, you know, you're definitely, um, uh, you're going to be exposed. You're, there's exposure to all this stuff, but you're going to spend as much energy as you can trying to limit loot. You know, I was thinking of Wi-Fi. I mean, Wi-Fi is just, I mean, they got whole cities in Wi-Fi now, but, but if you take your own, what you could control and you like you to reduce your exposure, then the exposure in other places is going to be minuscule. Is that, you know, is that, is that the kind of thought is control what you can control or will you not go places like Starbucks or somewhere where there's, you know, you know, there's Wi-Fi everywhere? Well, you know, it, it, it depends. So the idea yeah. here is that your, your cells operate on an electrochemical gradient of about negative 70 to negative 80 millivolts. And so if you're constantly exposing yourself to what would be called positive ions, which, which you'd get from like, you know, Wi-Fi, yeah. radiation, excessive use of Bluetooth, appliances, you know, driving in a, in a freaking car, et cetera, you're getting a buildup of positive ions, but, but you can reverse a lot of that damage by simply going out of your way to ensure that you're getting a lot of negative ion exposure. Okay. Okay. With that, and you get negative ions from things like running water, you know, in natural places like waterfalls and beaches, uh, walking barefoot outside on the grass or the dirt or other natural, natural uh, sources. Sunlight is a source of, uh, of negative ions, as is like really good, clean, structured uh, water. And, you know, the, the other thing is that you, know, even if you can't, whatever, you don't live in a beach or, or near a freaking forest, you can even like buy like negative ion generators. You know, I talked about air and having clean of the air. They make like standalone, like HEPA air filters. You could put in a room that like makes the air that you breathe really clean, but then can also do things 
like um, generate negative ions. Like you could you could easily do an Amazon search, right? For HEPA air filter with negative mm-hmm. ion generator. And so, yeah, I mean, it's not like you have to live as a bubble boy or you know <laughs> as, as the Unabomber, you know, out in the middle of nowhere. Or <laughs> but um, you want to take steps to mitigate the damage that might build up. And, you know, I I have podcasts that I've done on my website where I even talk about the use of things like um, magnesium and and diatomaceous earth and, and, you know, clay and and all all these things that can, for example, mitigate the effects of radiation or or the frequent use of like, you know, seaweed and chlorella and things that can help to like cilantro, things that can bind heavy metals or things that can, can bind, you know, the type of toxins you might get if you're eating shellfish. So it's not like you you know, don't go to Starbucks and you don't ever go to a, uh, a, a, a clam bake or an oyster feed or, you know, or a shrimp feed. And, and you don't ever like go to the movies because there's poor lighting. It's like just do what you can to mitigate the damage and then you, you live your life. Yeah. And that's the, that's the big, you're, you're a balance there trying not to. And I think the, the negative will come when you, you get that overexposure. Like I got sticking now I'm thinking I got Bluetooth headphones on man i gotta get these things off but but that kind of thing you, you take care of control we can control and then reverse the effects when you can you, you, i know you do a great job with that in your podcast of, of giving you know insight into how we can counteract that and then i so heard like getting back to the basics like i remember listening to one of your podcasts you talked about you want your kids you know you want your kids running in the wilderness like i grew up in the hills of west virginia running i mean i spent all my time running, jumping. Well, my kids, we live in Santa Barbara, California, basically in the city. We have the beach, but we, you know, I have no exposure to the uh, wilderness. So that's another way The that getting back to nature is another way of just, like you said, walking barefoot. Uh, I think it's fantastic. I think getting back to the basics is, is great. Um, and, and do you feel like, it, is that one of the big components of getting back to the basics with food, um, being in nature, is that one of the biggest components of staying healthy or is it more of the high tech or the more of the tweaking of the, uh, not, I want to say chemicals, but um, devices and things to, to do that. Basically what I'm asking, if, if somebody's going to get back to the basics of getting outside, getting in the wilderness is in, and getting to the beach, getting that, uh, walking in the grass, is that a big component of, of, of the negative ions and, and um, counteracting these negative Connecting the negative influences in our lives. That was a really long question. I know. I just uh, keep going and going. I, I think I think you're you're asking me if what I just <laughs> described to you actually uh, is a is a major component. And the answer is yes. Yes. <laughs> There's a short answer. I was I was just summing up what you said in a terrible mm-hmm. question. So, but thank you for for clarifying for everybody else. Now I get it. So perfect. I'm slower than a lot of my listeners, so it's perfect. So if I, I get it, that means everybody else is going to get it. <laughs> um, what about your, what you, I mean, you do a lot of, I mean, I saw you, you know, Spartan race, you do a lot of exercise. You have a, uh, just a personal, I don't want to say routine, but like something you do uh, in, in, in your, um, like, do you bike a certain amount or do you run a certain amount or do you, you know, do you have a regular routine weekly or is it all over the place? Well, like an exercise routine? Yeah. Yeah. Just what you do for, not even, I don't want to say exercise, I want to say just activity. Cause I mean, you would, you would consider an obstacle course and a, uh, well, you know, an, an exercise. I mean, it's, it's just an activity getting out there and doing things. And like you're, you were down at, uh, the underwater workouts you were doing, you know, that's a, that's exercise, but it's like, it's, it's different. So what, what do you do? What's your weekly, do you have a regular routine? Uh, yeah, I mean, like generally, um, I, I try and uh, ease into the day with things that aren't that stressful because your parasympathetic nervous system predominates at the beginning of the day, kind of like your rest and digest nervous system. And so I'll usually I'll start off the day with some easy things, you know, deep breathing, some yoga, yeah. like some decompression exercises for the spine, a walk in the sunshine, an easy swim a little hike out in nature, you know, something that's very simple and easy in the morning for, you know, 20, 30 minutes, typically uh, fasted, you know, I'm not, I'm not big into eating huge meals in the morning. And then I'll usually save any hard workouts. And, and a lot of, you know, sometimes it'll be weight training, sometimes it'll be high intensity interval training, sometimes 
paddle boarding, sometimes, you know, tennis game, whatever. But usually sometime between like 4 and 7 p.m. later on in the day when body temperature peaks and reaction time peaks and post-workout protein synthesis peaks and all these things that are advantageous for intense exercise, um, I'll save like the, you know, the sympathetic nervous system fight and flight dominant type of activities for later on in the day. As far as what those activities are, yeah, they vary quite a bit, right? Like right now I'm kind of like lifting heavier weights because it's kind of like you know the off season and so i'm doing a little bit more of a strength building focus you know whereas you know and during something like race season it might be more of like a metcon almost like a crossfit-esque type of workout with higher reps and more bouncing around between activities but but yeah it's usually kind of that concept of like easy stuff in the morning hard stuff later on in the day no that's yeah that's fantastic um and that's to kind of mimic the the rhythm of your body um so what about things for you personally? What, what, are you, you have something that you're really excited about that's coming up or it's that you're doing, you're involved in? Yeah, I'm always excited about life in <laughs> general. Uh, right now, um, as far as what I might be most excited about, oh, let me think. Um, you know, I'm, I'm working uh, on a uh right right now you know i i i've been doing a lot of obstacle course racing so i'm working on a a training plan along with another obstacle course racer where we're going to kind of kind of update a training plan we have our obstacle course racing and teach people how to how to kind of like uh get the 80 20 out of their training with that and that, that's uh that's called the obstacle dominator plan and we're, we're coming out with obstacle dominator uh 2.0 kind of an upgraded version of that and then i'm also uh writing a, a little bit of a fiction book right now and, um, yeah, and then planning on getting to a few hot spots over the course of the winter, do some spear fishing and get some big fish. And, yeah. yeah. It's just a little, little bit of everything. What made you, that's pretty, that's, that's fascinating. Um, the fiction writing, what, have you always wanted to do that? What kind of pushed you that direction? Yeah. I've only, I've only got about a minute or so left here before I gotta, I gotta hop on another call, but I can give you the, the short version is yeah, that, yeah. um, you know, yeah, I've always loved to write, um, love to write. It just turns me on. And, and I especially like to write, not just nonfiction, which I'm maybe more well known for, but I really like to write fiction. I, I love creative writing. And so, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of a nerd at heart. You know, I like stuff like <laughs> Lord of the Rings and, yes. and Chronicles of Narnia and, and, uh, you know, World of Warcraft and yeah. So, so, um, fantasy fiction is, is a little side project I'm working on. That is awesome. Well, Ben, I can't thank you enough. I mean, you're, yeah, I know you're really busy. You got a lot going on. I appreciate your time. And if anybody you want to find, you can, Ben is everywhere, but bengreenfieldfitness.com, the best place to find him. All kinds of resources. This podcast is amazing. Um, I definitely encourage you to check it out. But Ben, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show today. Cool. Well, thanks for having me on, man. And um, yeah, I, uh, I hope everybody got a little bit out of that. And um, I'll catch you later. All right. Thank you. Later. Oh, 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 oh,